Another story this week. There he is. Seems to be a lovely bloke. He's what we call in Britain a lollipop man. For those around the world that don't have lollipop men, uh, they stand with this well, black and white here, but it's a very bright sign. And they stand in the road outside schools when the schools are, you know, opening and closing. So they help the children safely across the road. Right? I mean, simple. Yeah? No. Nothing is simple with a system that is simpleton. Okay? This is the story. And again, it's about destroying diversity, spontaneity, uniqueness. Conform. Here we go. Council orders lollipop man to stop high-fiving children. Hey, all right, mate, how you doing? No, that's human interaction. That's spontaneity. That's happiness. <laughs> we can't have it. The software is miffed again. <clears throat> Here's the story. A Dumbarton, that's up in Scotland for people around the world, a Dumbarton lollipop man has been banned by the local council from high-fiving children as they cross the road. Nasana, his name, Nasana, um, is known as Scotland's happiest lollipop man due to his singing and dancing at work. Because he not only high-fives the kids as they go across the road, he's standing in the middle there, he has a little dance, eh? Isn't that what life's about? Joy? No, not to the system. Joy? Joy! Arrest that man! Okay. We'll go on with the madness. Oh. Sometimes I think it must be me, but then I think, nah, it's not. West Dun Bartonshire Council, for it is they, said safety fears were behind the decision. But school parents have questioned the council's reasoning. Well, they're, they're calling it reasoning. I mean, you know, I guess they had to come up with some kind of word. Uh, with one father, David Dufton, starting a Facebook campaign to try to reverse the move. A statement from West Dumbartonshire Council said, presses enter to activate software. All patrollers are instructed when crossing children over a road to remain static with one hand on their stick and the other stretching outwards. All right, I'm conforming, okay. This ensures that they can be seen and effectively provides a barrier between school pupils and the traffic. Let's work our way through this. Doing that, standing still, between the cars and the kids is safe. But doing that, all right, mate, hey! Standing between the kids and the traffic, is unsafe. Now, this ensures that they can be seen and effectively provides a barrier between school pupils and the traffic. Now, what are drivers going to do? They're going to come up and they'll say, well, he's standing still with, and he's got one hand on his stick and the other arm's out, I'm going to stop. And the next time they come along, no, he's dancing and high-fiving, I'm having him. <clears throat> Did I mention the world was freaking insane? I think I might have. You know, you've only got to look at the usual bloody suspects to see that staying in the European Union is not good for the rest of us. You've got the snake oil salesman, um, David Cameron, the Prime Minister, who's desperate to uh, keep Britain in the EU because he's got himself in a right mess. He um, offered a referendum to try to offset what he saw as the threat at the ballot box from UKIP, the uh, UK Independence Party, which is vehemently anti-EU and wants to come out. And he also felt, um, I'm sure, that he wasn't going to win the last election outright. It would probably end up as another coalition like the one before, and the other coalition partner would stop the vote and the referendum he was promising on coming out of the EU. So he thought, well, I've covered all bases there. Uh, and unfortunately, unfortunately for everybody, really, um, he won the election outright and he was stuck with having to uh, fulfill the promise of a referendum to leave 
the EU. And he is running round like uh, a headless chicken now, trying to um, persuade people to stay in a centralized, bureaucratic, fascist communist dictatorship in the unfolding. And what's happening is um, there are lies galore, the usual uh, technique when you want people to do something, it's frighten them to death to make them do what you want them to do. And so you have um, key repeating phrases, here's a few of them. Leap in the dark, ooh, leap in the dark, scary, um, by coming out. Actually, have we been out for most of the history of this country? Um, safe, stronger, better off. Safe or safer, another version. Strength in numbers, fear on your own, ooh. Cost, cost you your job, or oh, you'll lose your job if we come out, ooh. Yeah, fear, 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 best of both worlds. We can stay in and be a sovereign nation. What? I had to laugh when, 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 when Scotland was trying to get independence, which I supported, by the way. I think everyone should, should have independence and, and, and autonomy. But to claim that um, Scotland was going to be independent while still inside the European Union was ludicrous. There are no independent nations inside the European Union. That's not what the EU's there for. It's to take away independence, which, of course, it's been doing stage by stage by stage by stage uh, through what I call the totalitarian tiptoe ever since it was created. And we have a situation now where on top of all the fear and on top of all the manipulation, on top of all the lies, we're having a situation that ministers um, in the government who are uh, in favour of coming out, uh, they've been told that the civil service, publicly funded by the way, civil service can't help them and can't support them in their campaign to come out. But those ministers that are following the Cameron line and um, campaigning to stay in, they can be supported and helped massively so by the publicly funded civil service. And this for campaigns for a public, supposed to be open, independent, referendum. It's all a scam. And you've got the media bias through people like the BBC and it, it's, it's all um, uh, uh, skewed in favor of the, um, the stay in campaign. And then you look, like I said, at the people in favor of it. You've got snake oil salesmen, Cameron and Tony Blair, Tony Blair, war criminal. And in fact, snake oil salesman, war criminal for what happened in Libya and Syria, and it's still happening. And then you've got these heads of giant corporations. They're all in favor of staying in. Must be good for them then. And you've got former defense chiefs um, who were helping to orchestrate all these uh, wars and invasions. They want to stay in. And when you look at, at that bunch of characters, not least Blair, Cameron, heads of corporations, etc., if they want it, then it is almost certainly, virtually every time, bad for the rest of us. Which brings me to Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party, who were also in favour of staying in. You know, I was pleased when Jeremy Corbyn won the election to be the leader of the opposition Labour Party, because at least it would trigger some kind of genuine debate on all the austerity um, policies and programmes, creating great deprivation in this country by the snake oil salesman government. So I was glad on that alone, but there were many things I disagreed with him on. Uh, two, two major things. One, his support for the ludicrous um, fantasy 
of human-caused global warming and climate change. Even his brother, Piers Corbyn, who's a weather expert, uh, is, has been widely saying for years it's all a load of nonsense. So that was one area that I disagreed with him on. And the other one, fundamentally, was his support for continued membership of the European Union. And it's kind of a, a bit strange, really, to have the people I've just described, all of which Jeremy Corbyn would have no time for whatsoever, and yet he's standing shoulder to shoulder with them to try to persuade the British people to um, stay in the European Union. I think that's sad, and I think it's desperately misguided because it betrays a complete lack of understanding of what the EU agenda really is and has always been. Those others, snake oil and war criminal, they know what the agenda is. That's why they're supporting it. And what um, those that are genuine but misguided need to um, appreciate is what the EU is really all about. Since 20, 25 years now, I've been exposing what it is and what it, it um, was wanting to do and what it has wanted to do has unfolded ever since, step by step. This is the game. We're being taken step by step to a global centralized society based on a world government, world central bank controlling all finance, world army imposing the will of the world government. This is what NATO is and the expansion and constantly uh, NATO operating outside its designated area that I said in my books it would do back in the 90s.